Hello and welcome back to Whiskey Wars. My name is Sean and tonight we'll be doing our third round of March Madness. This time we're going to find out what is the best weeded bourbon under $40. Let's get into it. All right, so here is our lineup for this evening. And we got some big names on the table for sure. And uh, for those astute viewers out there, first off, I know that Buffalo Trace is not a weeded bourbon. I wanted to have it in the best bourbon under $40 group that we've got going on for March Madness. And this seemed like the best grouping to put it into, so here it is. But I know it's not a weeder, so we can move on now. But so, we do have Buffalo Trace, we got Makers 46, Makers 101, Larceny, and of course, Weller. Now, some big names here for sure. We will see which one is the best though. We're gonna start with Glass A. Show you that there. Glass A will be Makers 46. Get a little of that poured in there. Glass B will be Buffalo Trace. So B for Buffalo. Glass C will be Makers 101. And this is the only screw top in the bunch, which is strange since it's the highest price point. Glass D will be Larceny. And finally, Glass E will be Weller Special Reserve. Okay, we got our glasses on the Drunken Susan. Let's get these things spun up really drunk, myself including. If you, if you watch them, you'll get kind of drunkish. There we go, nice and mixed up. We got one trying to escape off. Oh, no, okay. Look at the camera, look at the camera. All right, now we don't know what's what. Let's take these things off and get to drinking. Okay, no nosing, let's just go straight into glass one and work our way down to glass five here. Glass one, down the hatch. Okay, so here is what glass one is. For those of you at home, of course it's already down at the bottom, but nice first sip, uh, did enjoy that. Uh, very mild on the palate, so of course all these are lower proof, but this one certainly is. Uh, did get quite a bit of barrel spice on that though, so nice cinnamon, nice black pepper, uh, nice caramel note in there, very light brown sugar, uh, kind of a hint of a cherry note, and uh, also just a, a little bit of vanilla in there. All in all, nice mouthfeel and a good first sip. Let's move on to glass number two. Okay, so here's what glass number two is. Hope you saw that at home. Glass number two, quite a bit different. A uh, lot more fruity notes, especially dark fruit, so kind of got a date in there. Uh, also maybe like a grape. Uh, certainly some stone fruits like plum, maybe maybe a peach, probably more like plum though. Also nice uh, black pepper note in there, a little bit of cinnamon, not nearly as much as glass one. Also a little bit of a funkiness on the finish, kind of reminded me of what you might get on some Tennessee whiskeys. Not a bad thing at all, but definitely quite a bit different than the finish on one. Let's go ahead and move along to glass number three. So here's what glass number three is. Hope you're seeing that at home. Uh, kind of not much going on there. A uh, little bit of caramel up front, a little bit of cinnamon, uh, just a little bit of barrel spice, little kind of toasty oak showing through there. Everything there was very light. And then the finish is a little on the sour side. Not bad, but certainly I would say something like a green grape or not quite lemon sour. It's not quite that sour, but uh, so maybe not really strawberry, but the tartness that you get from a strawberry. Anyway, uh, all in all, not my favorite so far. Definitely liked one and two better. Let's move along to glass number four. So here's what glass number four is. Have to say, quite a bit better than glass number three. Um, maybe even better than two. I don't know, hard to say. I'm liking these three so far though. This one was the most cinnamon forward so far. Lots and lots of cinnamon spice and all, really a lot of baking spices in general. Uh, getting a nice kind of anise note in there. Uh, lots of black pepper. It's a, it's a spicy gal for sure. Uh, 
Really nice caramel note in there. Just like a really nice caramel candy. Little brown sugar, but not real heavy. Really nice toasted oak note there as well. Uh, really enjoyed that one. So looking forward to see what that glass is coming up here. Let's move on to glass number five. All right, here we go. There's glass number five for you at home. Uh, kind of similar to glass two. So I'm curious, I figure just based on the palettes, these two are probably makers. I'm not sure which is which. I'm guessing that this is spicier, this is 101. Um, but then these two are similar. The thing is, I don't think of Weller and Buffalo Trace as being similar, but I also don't think of Larceny and Buffalo Trace as being similar. So I don't know, kind of odd, but very similar palette to two. So lots of dark fruits, uh, very sweet, not a whole lot of spice, got nice kind of like roasted date, uh, plum, raisin. Um, on the back end though, and kind of mid palate, I did get a little bit of an apple note, which tells me that might be Buffalo Trace. I'm not certain because as I said, these two are similar. They both had lots of free notes going on and they both had that kind of funk on the back end, which I don't think of Larceny or Buffalo Trace or Weller having that, really any of these. Uh, so kind of confused as to what that might be. But anyway, we're gonna do some blinds off camera and then we will come back with our winners and losers. So hang on and we will be right back. All right, folks, here we go. Let's get into this. Let's see what our winners and losers are. But before we do that, please hit that like button if you're enjoying the video and also subscribe because we really appreciate that. Now, let's see who our fifth place is. Fifth place is E. E, okay, not surprised. E is Weller. This is the one I believe I described as being almost nothingness. There was just nothing on the nose. There was nothing on the palate. It was just very, very mild. I would say this is a great beginner bourbon. Uh, that's probably the role that this fills best is, you know, if you like things very mild and you're new to bourbon, this is a great bottle for that. I know when I was first getting my wife into bourbon, she really enjoyed this bottle. I mean, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just, it's very, very mild. So if you're used to barrel proofs, this is probably not gonna do much for you. That said, uh, I have a new segment coming up, uh, self-promoting a little bit here, and that is how much should you pay? That's what we're going to call the segment. They will be short videos, and this is our first bottle we're going to put out in the how much should you pay category, or video, I guess we'll say. So you guys will be able to get my thoughts on what I think you guys should be paying for various bottles. And uh, you know, I'm doing it because I see these questions on forums all the time. So hopefully it's like a public service annou announcement kind of thing, if I can get the words out. The whiskey is starting to work. Okay, so that is glass number five down. Now let's move on to our fourth place, glass number four, and that is D. And D is Larceny. Okay, so that came in the same exact placing as the Weeded Whiskey War I did six, eight months ago, I guess. Uh, these were one and two. Uh, followed by Rebel 100 right over there. Um, so not really surprised that my mind hasn't changed on these. That's where they're at. But now from here out, it's all new. All these were never in the original Weeded Whiskey War. So what will be next? And as far as Larceny goes, I think it's a great bottle. I think like people really crap on this bottle a whole lot. I don't really get why. I think it's a good bottle for the price point it's at. Uh, I mean, it beat the Weller. So, you know, whatever that's worth. Anyway, let's move on to glass number three. Glass number three is C. Well, this is strange. We're like going in alphabetical order so far here. Uh, anyway, C is Makers 101. Well, there you go. I thought going into this, 
that that would be my top dog. So that didn't happen. Oh well. Uh, you know, it was good, but I, there was like this sourness and funkiness that I, I didn't like as much as glasses one and two. So that means I'm probably going to add to the Buffalo Trace hype. I hope it's not one. Oh God, don't let it be one. Because then we're never going to find Buffalo Trace. That's what's going to happen. If it's one, we're never going to find Buffalo Trace. Well, I mean, we're, we're still not finding Buffalo Trace. And it's not like my channel said. Anyway, let's move along. Now the things that matter. The glasses that are moving on. Let's find out what is our second place. Second place is A. Well, okay. There you go. Makers 46 coming in second. <sighs> and it hurts my heart. <sighs> now, <sighs> we all know and love Buffalo Trace. Uh, I don't think there's anything more that needs to be said about it. It's a great bottle. It's a great bottle at the price point that it's at currently. And that is $25 to $30. It's not a great bottle above that, and I'm not crapping on it because it's one. It's just, I'm seeing the price is starting to go up, and if you're like me, that frustrates you. Because we don't need more prices of things going up. There's already enough things that are already going up. We don't need more things going up. So, Buffalo Trace is great, clearly. I picked it out of these five, and all of these, I think we can agree, are great bourbons. But, Buffalo Trace won it all. So these two are moving on. I'm kind of surprised myself. I really thought that Makers 101 would move on. It didn't, it's out, it's done. These are two great bottles and folks, if you have not tried them, you know, go and find yourself one. And if you can't find Buffalo Trace, just remember Makers 46 was a very close second. Honestly, it was kind of like this uh, it, it took me a while to, to decide between these two, which makes sense because they're very similar. Um, and then these two were, there were, there were not quite that much of a gap, but there was, there was a decent gap here. There was a margin of error here. Um, so this one, it, it, it kind of sucks for me that that didn't make it. I, I was hoping it would, but hey, you can't, you can't cheat a blind. That's the great thing about these. So that is round three down. And folks, if you've enjoyed this video, then please hit that like button. And also, if you're really enjoying them, please subscribe. We really appreciate that. And here is the special playlist right here for March Madness. And here is the subscribe button. So go ahead and do that. And until next time, folks, just remember, you can never have too much good whiskey.